بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Why Ramadan? What is so special about this time of the year? Why do we have to strive in ibadah and do extra deeds? Why do we have to wake up in the middle of the night or early in the morning, stand up for extra prayers, leave the comfort of our beds, even if you are tired, get thirsty and, 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 and be hungry in the day and spend your hard earned uh, money, uh, uh, spend of that money also in optional charities as well. So many things in Ramadan. Why all of that? What is so special about this month? Muslims usually do that throughout the year. However, in Ramadan, they increase that a lot. This was the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, it is mentioned that the Sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, was the most generous out of all people. And he was his most generous in the month of Ramadan. The Messenger وسلم, never spent the full night in prayer except in the last 10 nights in Ramadan. The Messenger وسلم, used to review the full Quran of the Jibreel السلام, in the month of Ramadan. So on so many things happens in the month of Ramadan makes the person wonder why. Why? Because Ramadan is an extraordinary month. It is unlike any other time of the year. So many extraordinary things happen in this month, the month of Ramadan. In fact, not only in this world, even in the hereafter, extraordinary things happen. Yes, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us that when Ramadan comes, all the gates of paradise are open wide. All the gates of hellfire are shut, closed. The evil ones are enchained. So many opportunities, sir. You see, the path to paradise is not an easy one. It is difficult. This is an item that Allah Almighty is offering to you for a price. And it is an expensive thing. It is not a little thing. And the price has to be worthy. And that is why the Messenger وسلم, explained to us this reality. This is like if you are traveling and you come into an interjection, one of them is easy going downhill, for example, very soft and easy road, etc. But at the end of it, there is a cliff, or there is certain death, or big harm awaiting you. There is another one that is steep high. You need to climb. It is very tiring. It is not that easy. Yet at the end, you will find comfort. You will find a place waiting for you to rest. You will find food and safety and so on. Which one do you take? See, any sane, wise person obviously is going to take the difficult road because it leads to safety. He's not going to take the easy way out that leads him to destruction and harm. And thus, this is the example. In Ramadan, the path to paradise is made easy. SubhanAllah. This is the month of Jannah. It is made easy. So now you have that easy path that leads to goodness and safety and, and paradise from Allah Almighty. The way this is made easy is reflected in a beautiful hadith where Allah Almighty himself is saying that every action of a person is for himself, except for song, except for fasting. It is for me, for Allah Almighty and I will reward for it. One of the beautiful understanding of this uh, hadith is that the every ibadah was dedicated to false gods throughout history. Charity or prayer or, or visiting or pilgrimage, etc. All of these, the offerings, they were offered to other false gods. However, fasting 
is offered only to Allah Almighty. That is exclusive. Furthermore, it has the sense of sincerity in it. You cannot fake that you are fasting. You cannot claim, you cannot show off. Even if you declare in front of people, I am fasting, you might be lying. Nobody knows. This is between you and Allah Almighty. And thus, it is sincere for the seat of Allah. However, there is a third understanding which is very beautiful. An understanding that clarifies what does it mean that all the gates of paradise are open, open wide. One of the understanding is that this is an example that Allah Almighty facilitate good deeds for the worshippers so that they will have an easy way to Jannah, an easy way to paradise, subhanAllah. So Allah Almighty is making it very easy for anyone who would like to be admitted in Jannah. This beautiful uh, understanding shows you the mercy and generosity of Allah Almighty. By Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty did not give us Ramadan to punish us. No. Allah Almighty did not give us Laylat al-Qadr to punish us. No. Allah Almighty did not uh, obligate fasting upon us except to forgive us. By Allah Almighty, only to forgive us. The fasting, only to forgive us. The night prayers, to forgive us. Laylat al-Qadr, to forgive us. So the, the Ramadan is to give us Jannah. That is why Allah Almighty gave us the beautiful month, uh, the special month of Ramadan. And that is why in Ramadan, Ramadan is a fresh start. The stage is set for everyone. It is so easy to be better to get closer to Allah Almighty. That is why when you start Ramadan, the moment you reach Ramadan, the previous sins between Ramadan and Ramadan are removed from you. Ramadan to Ramadan is forgiveness. If you avoid the major sins in Islam, every other sin is forgiven from Ramadan to Ramadan for the full year. So it's a fresh start, subhanAllah. And also, why Ramadan? Because Ramadan is an invitation and a warning. Ramadan is an invitation and a warning. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned in the hadith, it will be said in the very beginning of Ramadan, the onset of Ramadan, it will be said, O oh, doer of goods, proceed further. Proceed, increase your good deed, go forward. This is your chance. O oh, doers of good, proceed. And all oh, seekers of evil, stop. Keep away. This is not your time. You have to avoid the wrongdoings and the sins in the month of Ramadan more than at any other time. So this is a glad tiding and an invitation to the seekers of good. This is your competition. This is your time. This is your arena. Show Allah Almighty your goodness, your best side. And the doers of evils, the seekers of evils, be careful. Be warned. The sins of Ramadan are worse than the sins outside Ramadan. This is not a time to take the matters lightly. You need to correct yourself before it's too late. The Messenger وسلم, showed us the concept of someone missing the opportunity of Ramadan. This is a dua from Jibreel alayhi salam. The Messenger وسلم, is saying, I mean, what was the dua? Jibreel, peace be upon him, is saying, O oh Allah Almighty, may anyone who reach Ramadan and he is not forgiven his sins. He does not seize the opportunity to be closer to Allah Almighty, to have a fresh start. May Allah Almighty keep him away from his mercy. Oh Muhammad say Ameen. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ameen. Oh Allah Almighty accept this dua. SubhanAllah. So Jibreel peace when he's making dua against anyone who is missing this opportunity, not getting total forgiveness from Allah Almighty, because we said Ramadan is to get forgiveness. So don't waste this opportunity. Now, uh, why Ramadan is also extraordinary, there are other points, beautiful points. The first one, there are special and special worship and special rewards in the month of Ramadan. Obviously fasting, this is the most important one and the biggest one. What is the reward for fasting? Allah Almighty says, except for fasting, it is for me and I will reward for it. Nobody knows how much the reward is. Nobody knows. Not even the angels. None. 
Only Almighty knows how much he is going to reward. Part of that uh, reward, or the special status of them, there is a special gate in paradise. There are eight gates in paradise. One of them, specifically for the people of fasting. SubhanAllah, may Allah Almighty make us among them. This is called Ar-Rayyan, the gate of Ar-Rayyan. It will be opened in the hereafter. And the people of fasting, where are the people of fasting? They will stand, say, no, please. They will be admitted from that gate, gate Ar-Rayyan. When they are admitted, it will be shut closed. None entered after them, only exclusively for the people of fasting. May Allah Almighty make us among them. Second thing is that fasting in the month of Ramadan expiate all your previous sins with two conditions. Anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith in Allah Almighty and while believing in the extra reward and expecting the great reward from Allah Almighty, all his previous sins will be forgiven. The Messenger Sallallahu said that. The other ibadah is the night prayer. Same. Anyone who does that with the same two conditions, all his previous sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah. Recitation of the Holy Quran. This is the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who used to review the Holy Quran with Jibreel peace be upon him once. And in the last year of his life, they reviewed it twice in the same month. It is Sunnah, the reward for recitation of the Holy Quran in Ramadan is much more. So this will make it much easier for you to get into paradise and inshallah in Jannah. Uh, another one is the dua and supplication. The Holy Quran is very beautiful. It is unlike any book ever. The way the Quran moves from one topic to another and back and forth and so on is uh, outstanding. And the scholars usually try to understand why sometimes a verse comes in the middle of verses that speak about the same topic. So it seems as if it is off topic, but it's not. Allah Almighty does not say anything or do anything except with wisdom. You might understand it, you might not. It might not be for you for future generations and so on. So scholars keep on trying to deduce the wisdom behind them. In the verses of fasting, in the middle comes a strange and beautiful verse. Allah Almighty is saying, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَى here, usually, when Allah Almighty is addressing people on the uh, speech of the Messenger, وسلم, it will start with Qul, say, say, O Muhammad, to people. Say, O Muhammad, to people. Throughout the whole Quran. All right? Uh, you are aware of the last Qul, huwa Allah, had Qul, Adam, Bilfala, Qur, Adam, Bilnas, and so on. Here, there is no Qul. No, say, O Muhammad. Here, immediately, Allah Almighty says, and when my servant inquire about me, inquire from you, O Muhammad, about me, about Allah Almighty. When my servant inquire about me. Again, he does not say, say. He says, then I am near. SubhanAllah. No say here. Allah Almighty directly answers. So, I am near. What does that mean? I answer the supplication of the supplicator when he supplicates, subhanAllah. When he supplicates to Allah Almighty, I respond, I answer. Allah Almighty himself is ready for you. You have to initiate it. You have to start the dua. You have to make the sincere dua. However, that dua in Ramadan is much more important than at any other time. That is why this verse comes in the middle of the verses about fasting. And, and, and the fasting person has get guaranteed dua. As long as you are fasting, your dua is accepted by Allah Almighty. The Messenger وسلم, said, among the people whose supplication is not rejected and a fasting person until he breaks his fast. One. Second. You have a guaranteed dua, one single guaranteed dua at the time of breaking the fast. Guaranteed. Don't waste this opportunity as well. One of the best things to pray for, of course, 
Jannah. To their forgiveness from Allah Almighty and the exemption from hellfire, protection from all accountabilities and the highest place in Jannah. So concentrate on making a dua for any good thing that you want in this world and in the hereafter. And you can concentrate on the com comprehensive uh, dua. Uh, another beautiful ibadah that is specific to the month of Ramadan is charity. Generally, charity, as you mentioned, throughout the year, but more so in Ramadan, as it is the Sunnah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Furthermore, there is an obligatory charity in the month of Ramadan, which is Zakat al-Fatr, the biggest collective charity in the whole world every year. And that is a beautiful type of ibadah to do. And it is the Sunnah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi to increase your charity in the uh, day of fasting. Why do you have to ch give charity? And especially why Zakat al-Fitr? Why it became obligatory? Why Allah Almighty obligated uh, upon us Zakat al-Fitr for many wisdoms? The first one, our forgiveness, subhanAllah. Again, forgiveness. Yes? Yeah, really? How? I'll explain to you. You see, giving Zakat al-Fitr, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that it will purify the fasting person, purify the fast of a fasting person. What does that mean? You see, fasting is not useful to you unless if it is pure. You did not do any bad things in it. No bad thoughts, no bad speeches, no bad actions. Ah, you keep your heart pure and your actions pure and so on. But we are human being and many of us might directly or indirectly fall into one of these problems or intentionally or unintentionally knowingly or unknowingly and so on apparently or in secret we are human being so with the mercy of allah almighty who gives zakat al-fatr it will purify your fasting and thus fasting will benefit you subhanallah alhamdulillah second benefit is for people who are in need this is a day of Eid and celebration at the end of Ramadan. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not want any poor person or needy person on earth on that day. So every single person who is able to give a charity, no matter how little it might be, he has to give that little charity of Zakat al-Fatr, every single Muslim on earth. Even on, you have to give it on behalf of your babies and infants and elderly people, everyone. So, this is a beautiful collective uh, charity and solidarity uh, and unity among all Muslims and all human beings for the good benefits of erasing eradication of, of uh, poverty and need among people. And there are many people who are in need. We have to pay attention to that. This is one of the main ways to protect our own goodness and blessings and, and, and wealth as well. So if you want to protect your wealth and your goodness, you have to do charity and you have to increase your charity. Also in Ramadan, there is Laylat al-Qadr. So why do you have Laylat al-Qadr? SubhanAllah, for the same reason, for forgiveness. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned standing up in the night, Laylat al-Qadr, for prayer, the optional prayer, also all your previous sins will be forgiven with the same previous two conditions. Ah, SubhanAllah. We might uh, take a little uh, extra point here. You see, standing the night of Laylat al-Qadr is multiple levels, not only one level. The biggest level is that you spend the full night in ibadah and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in other good deeds like dua, recitation of the Holy Quran and uh, saying good things and dhikr, remembrance of Allah Almighty, charity, etc. All of that is Qiyam al-Layl. But most importantly is the prayer as well. Obviously, very few people can do that. Spending the full night in prayer, this is a huge challenge. And alhamdulillah, there are people who do that. But this is, might be a challenge for some people who cannot do that or who are too lazy to do that. All right. Does it mean that you, are, you have lost the opportunity? No, there is an easier opportunity, which is, you see, if people are praying, if the imam is praying with you, taraweeh and tahajjud, one imam or two imams, same, you stay with them, pray with them until they finish. And Allah Almighty will write for you as if you have prayed the full night, the full night. So you stay like half an hour or more or less. Alhamdulillah, nowadays it's short for people who do not like lengthy prayers. So this half an hour or more or less, Allah Almighty will reward you as if you have prayed the full night. 
somebody who is even less uh, than that. He does not want to do even that. Okay, at least one of them. Either pray taraweeh or pray tahajjud with the imam until he finishes. Alhamdulillah, you will also have the full reward of the full night. Somebody who is even lazier than that, okay? Pray Isha with the Imam in Jama'ah in the Masjid and pray Fajr with the Imam in the Jama'ah in the Masjid. Allah Almighty will write for you the prayers of the full night. SubhanAllah, how generous is Allah Almighty? Somebody who is even lazier than that, okay, fine. One of them, either Isha with the Imam in the Jama'ah in the Masjid, you will have the half the night. Or Fajr, you will have half the night. Alhamdulillah, pray. Somebody who is even lazier than that, okay, right? Pray at least two optional rak'ah after Isha. Before that, pray four rak'ah, the sunnah of Isha, four rak'ah, instead of two. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned that anyone who prays four rak'ah, optional prayer, after Isha, they will be equal to the same rak'ah in Laylatul Qadr. So you'll have the same reward of Laylatul Qadr, praying four rak'ah in Laylatul Qadr. Great. Somebody who is lazier, two rak'ah. Because you'll be included with people who stood up in the night, even if it is just two optional rak'ah. Great. Somebody who is even lazier, subhanAllah. Is there something less? Yes. Because Allah Almighty wants to forgive us. Allah Almighty wants to forgive us. So there are so many options, even for lazy people. Yes. Recite the last two verses in Surah Al Baqarah. Last two verses in Surah Al Baqarah. The Messenger وسلم, says, It will suffice the person. Sufficing for what? Part of the understanding is sufficing him for standing up in the night for prayer. So they will equal as if he stood up in the night and prayed to Allah Almighty. SubhanAllah. That will take just a minute or two. And most importantly is to have the intention, keep the intention from the beginning of Ramadan that you are going, and throughout, repeat that every night in Ramadan, that you are going to stand up in the night for prayer for the sake of Allah Almighty. What happens is that even if you were lazy and you could not do it, or you were prevented from doing that, or you forgot, or you overslept, you will get the full reward as if you have done it. Because the Messenger وسلم, told us that when someone intends sincerely to do something, tries to do it and he fails to do it, Allah Almighty will write for him the full reward of the full good deed as if he have done it completely, subhanAllah. I understand some of you might be asking, if it is so easy and I can suffice with just very little thing, why should I tire myself and go and pray? Why do I have to do all of these? The others when everyone is going to get like the reward of uh, spending the full night in prayer? This is a good question. The answer is that they are not the same. They are not the same. Even when the reward is mentioned that you will get the full reward of something, it does not mean that you will be equal to the one who actually did it. No. For many reasons. The first one, the one who actually did it, he does not get one single reward. He gets multiplication of at least 10 times. And Ramadan, it could be 70 times up to 700 times multiplication. SubhanAllah. Yes. Second thing, the one who does all of these things, it will be as if he not only spent one night in prayer, but the multiple nights. So before the multiplication of 10 times or 70 times or 700 times, that will be not multiplied for one night prayer only, but for all the options that he has done, SubhanAllah. So they are not equal for sure. Right. Back to the extraordinary month of Ramadan and Jannah. Uh, SubhanAllah, every night there is a grand prize. Grand prize from Allah Almighty. Every night in Ramadan. Every night. From the night until the Fajr. What happens? Allah Almighty will free people from hellfire. Exempt them entirely from hellfire. Those are people who deserve, for one reason or another, being in hellfire for punishment, for whatever they might have done. But Allah Almighty, with His generosity and mercy, free them from that. So they will never, never be touched by hellfire. May Allah Almighty make us among them. So this is 
the, the, the prize that actually we want. This is why the month of Ramadan is, is extraordinary. If you have so many options, so many abilities for total forgiveness, and then somebody, God forbid, misses all of them, obviously he, he is not serious about having mercy from Allah Almighty. That why is the, the reason for the dua of Jibreel, peace be upon him. When you have all these opportunities, all of them, and, and, and one of the scholars mentioned that in every day there is about 100 opportunity for total forgiveness in Ramadan, every day and night in Ramadan, subhanAllah. We have mentioned the most important out of them, but there are so many other times when the dua is accepted by Allah Almighty. Every sujood that you do, this is an opportunity for an acceptation of dua between every adhan and iqama. This is an opportunity, etc., etc. So there are so many opportunities every day in Ramadan. Of course, when you do that while you are fasting, this is much more likely to be answered by Allah Almighty. So we should not waste all of these uh, great opportunities. Uh, now, uh, one, one point that is linked with uh, fasting, which is very important for the topic we are talking about, the link between fasting and Jannah. Allah Almighty, when he obligated fasting upon us, he said the reason that we may attain taqwa, reach taqwa, have taqwa, taqwa is piety, Taqwa is protecting yourself from the punishment of Allah Almighty by obeying his orders and by abstaining from everything that he forbade. Taqwa is something that is very important. You see, if you are walking in a, in a road that have many pricks or, 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 or bumps or, 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 or pits, something that is dangerous for you or harmful to you, how do you do? What do you do? You take care, you try not to step on anything that are harmful, and so on, you move carefully, this is taqwa. So when you are moving in life, and you are doing everything in life, observe Allah Almighty. What Allah Almighty loves, what Allah Almighty does not like, this is taqwa. So fasting is linked with taqwa, good. What about Jannah? Jannah is for whom? Jannah is for those who have taqwa, subhanAllah, yes? Allah Almighty mentioned in al muttaqina fi jannati wa ayun in al muttaqina fi jannat so many wa naeem in al muttaqina fi zilal wa ayun all the descriptions of jannat linked with al muttaqin subhanallah furthermore Allah Almighty says wa uzlifat al jannatu lil muttaqin a ghayra ba'id tilka al jannatu allati nurithu min ibadina man kana taqiyya wa taqwa the link between taqwa and jannah throughout the holy quran subhanallah so there is a direct link between ramadan reaching taqwa having jannah inshallah that is why we need to pay attention to this concept throughout our life and maybe we will discuss it inshallah in details in another uh, talk the uh, second part is about uh, the uh, um, how how is uh, taqwa different for uh, for fasting people what it, what it, why, why would it be different for fasting people than for other people taqwa is required for everyone so you do the salah so that you have taqwa inshallah you do the charity so that you will have taqwa but allah almighty linked taqwa with fasting see because fasting person pays attention even to a single drop inside his mouth that will not seep down his throat while he's fasting. Even while rinsing in wudu, he's careful not to even drink one drop of water. What does he do? Nothing. But he's doing it for the sake of Allah. He's careful, he's afraid. He's asking about eye drops, ear drops, knees, knees drop, inhale or injection. Asking about everything. He's, he's careful not to invalidate the fasting. This is taqwa. So fasting teaches you taqwa. That is why Allah Almighty says, except for fasting, it is for me and I will reward for it. The second thing is that the fasting, you know, a fasting person has two times when he will experience extreme happiness and joy. One of them in this world, the second one in the hereafter. The Messenger Sallallahu explained to us, this is specific for a fasting person. The first time, when he breaks his fast, he is happy that he fasted, subhanAllah. He is happy that he is breaking the fast. He has done the obligation. He has managed 
to challenge himself and challenge his basic needs for a full day for the sake of Allah Almighty, for the love of Allah Almighty. So he's happy now. Allah Almighty allowed him to break the fast and he's happy by breaking the fast. Alhamdulillah. Now he can enjoy the food and a drink that was forbidden for him in the day. The second time of happiness is when he meets Allah Almighty, he will be happy with his fasting. He will be happy because he fasted, because he realized how much reward, great reward from Allah Almighty for fasting. So he is happy that he was among those who fasted for the sake of Allah Almighty. When we are talking about uh, Jannah, we need to realize the 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 value of jannah and sadly we are tricked by shaitan and tricked by this world and we do not pay attention to that you see human beings do not value except what they know is worth they do not pay much attention to the things that they do not realize their values no when they realize it that is when they pay attention that is when they are careful about it there is one beautiful hadith explaining to us the concept of paradise and the reward from Allah Almighty in Jannah. And this is a very beautiful and strange hadith, and it is about the last person who will be admitted in paradise. The last person. The last person who will be admitted in paradise. So he's going through a sirat and a little walk and a little, he's face down, he trembles, he's about to fall in hellfire, he stands up again. He crawls a little and so on until he makes it. And he is sometimes touched by hellfire, subhanAllah. La ilaha illallah. That close, touched by hellfire. And then as soon as he is far away, alhamdulillah, he has made it through the sirat. He has made it on top of hellfire. He reached the safety now on the other side. He looks who saved me from you. Verily, Allah Almighty has given me a great thing that he has not given anybody. So he thinks that he was the most blessed person among all the creation of Allah Almighty. Simply by being saved from the, 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 the danger of hellfire. Now, uh, well, after a little while, a tree will grow. He will see a tree ahead of it. So now he is saying, my Lord, bring me closer to this tree so that I will be under its shade and I will drink a little from the water near it. So Allah Almighty, his Lord tells him, oh, son of Adam, maybe if I'll give you that, you will ask me for something more or something else. He said, no, my Lord. And he gave an oath to Allah Almighty that he is not going to ask him anything else. And his Lord forgive him, excuses him. Allah Almighty excuses him because he is saying what he has absolutely no patience against. He cannot control that. So his Lord brings him closer to it. So he's having shade and he's drinking from the water of it. And then after a little while, another tree that is better than the previous one is brought. So he's saying that. He's saying, my Lord, Get me closer to this so that I will drink from its water. I will have shade under it. And I will not ask you for anyone else or anything else. Allah Almighty says, son of Adam, didn't you give me an oath that you are not going to ask me anything other than the previous one? So maybe if I will also bring you closer to this, you will ask me for another one. So he gives another oath that he is not going to ask him anything else. And his Lord excuses him because he's seeing something that he has absolutely no patience against. So his Lord brings him closer to it. So he's having a shade and he's drinking from that. Then another tree at the gate of paradise is brought up. This is much better than the previous two. So he says, my Lord, get me closer to this so that I will have shade under its shade. I will drink from its water. I will not ask you for anyone else or anything else. His Lord Allah Almighty is saying, son of Adam, didn't you give me an oath that you are not going to ask me anything else? He says, yes, oh my Lord. Bala in Arabic, which is in the knee. Yes, I have done. I will not ask you anyone else. Again, his Lord excuses him because he's saying what he has absolutely no patience against that. So he bring him closer to it. Now he is closer at the gate of paradise. 
So he's hearing the sound of the people of paradise. Now he's hoping to get inside paradise. He says, my Lord, get me inside it, inside paradise. Allah Almighty says in the hadith, O oh, son of Adam, what will make you pleased with me? What will make you pleased with me? So that you will not keep on breaking your promises and your oaths. Are you pleased that I will give you as the kingdom of the whole earth and another one with it similar to it? So the man is heartbroken now. He says, my Lord, are you mocking me? Are you making fun of me while you are Lord of the world? <laughs> so I don't know. Are you making fun of me? You are mocking me and you are Lord of the world, subhanAllah. Yes, he does not believe that is. I just want to be admitted. He still will give you double the kingdom of the whole earth, subhanAllah. Ibn Masud, the narrator of the hadith, he, he laughed when he reached here. And he asked people, why didn't you ask me why I laughed, subhanAllah? So they asked him, why are you laughing? He says, I laughed because the messenger وسلم, laughed in this way. And it was, he was asked, oh, messenger of Allah, why do you laugh? He says, because of the laughing of Allah Almighty, when the man said, are you making fun of me while you are Lord of the world? Allah Almighty says, no, I am not making fun of you. I'm not mocking you, but I am able on anything that I want. I can give you that. I can guarantee you that. So subhanAllah. The, 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 the person who is the least in paradise, the least in paradise, the first promise given by Allah Almighty to him, double that of the entire kingdom of earth, everything. This is the least in paradise. There is another beautiful uh, hadith which uh, continues that, the same narration. Uh, Musa, peace be upon him, asked Allah Almighty, oh my Lord, uh, what is the least grade in paradise? The least grade in paradise for the least person in paradise. So Allah Almighty says that he is a man that comes after everyone is admitted in paradise. So all the people of paradise are already inside paradise. And uh, he, he will be said, it will be said to him, enter paradise. Of course, he looks around, it's already for me. Everybody's there. So he says, my Lord, how? And everyone has already taken their places and their palaces and their, their houses and, and they have taken all their gifts and everything. How? He thought that it's already packed, it's already over, everybody has taken everything. So it will be said to him, will you be pleased if you will have similar to the kingdom of a king of the kings of earth, an entire kingdom? So he said, I am pleased, my Lord. So it will be said to him, you have that, and you have double 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 that. Would it be said to him in the fifth time, he says, I am pleased, my Lord. So Allah Almighty will say to him, or it will be said to him, you have that, everything before, and tenfold it is, tenfold of that. And you are guaranteed whatever you wish, whatever you hope for, whatever you desire by your eyes, you will have that. So he says, I am pleased, my Lord. At that moment, Musa alayhi salam is asking Allah Almighty, my Lord, what about the highest people in paradise? SubhanAllah. Beautiful question from Musa alayhi salam. Here the answer Allah Almighty says, those are the ones that I wanted to prepare their honor and their in paradise, their place in paradise and their gifts in paradise by my own hands, Allah Almighty. And then I sealed it. I sealed it so nobody knows about it. Not even the angels, not even the prophets and messengers, none except Allah Almighty. And I sealed over it so no eye has ever seen, no ears has ever heard. It was never come across the imagination of elf and a single person in the mind of a person. SubhanAllah. And, and it's interesting, you know, no eye has seen because you have seen a lot of things. Which one is more, the, the hearing or the seeing? Say, what do you see or what do you hear? Well, you hear about so many things that you have not seen. So it's much more. So it's not only that no eyes has seen, no ear has even heard, not, no news, no description, nothing. 
and not even the imagination, which is almost limitless, the imagination, but not even the imagination knows about how much in paradise. So we are in the month of paradise. We're in the month of Ramadan. This is an opportunity. I'd like to include where by, by reminding myself and, and, and everyone, this is a competition. The hereafter is way better than this world. This world distracted us, distract people, blinds people. This adornment is very temporary. It is not the real thing. The real world, the real life is there. So do not be distracted. Allah Almighty reminded us so many times in the Holy Quran, do not be distracted and fooled by this dunya, this world. SubhanAllah. And, and, and Yahya bin Ma'ad, he used to say that and, and, uh, when, when people are asking for the dunya, they humiliate themselves. When they are asking for the hereafter, this is an honor. So I am surprised why people are choosing humility for something that will end very soon. And they do not desire for great honor for something in the hereafter that will remain forever. We should not be fooled by this uh, dunya. We need to strive hard for paradise. And what about if we did not, we are, we are so sad, we have wasted so much time in our lives throughout the, 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 the years and in Ramadan, from the beginning of Ramadan until now and so on. What do we do? How do we make up for this? Is there a shortcut? Yes, there are many shortcuts. There are many shortcuts. Part of it is the dhikr and remembrance of Allah that is comprehensive. One single dhikr equals spending the full day and night in dhikr, better than that. And there are multiples among them, such as subhanallah al-azim wa bihamdi, or subhanallah bihamdihi adada khalqihi wa rida nafsi wa zina ta'arshi wa midada kalimati. Or uh, Subhanallah, Adama fil Ardu, Subhanallah, Adama fil Sama, Subhanallah, Adama bin Ahma, Subhanallah, Adama Shaam in Shayim Bad, Subhanallah, Himil Samawat, and Al Ardu, Mina bin Ahma, and Masha, Abuna in Shayim Bad, and and Allah Akbar similar to, the, to, to that, Subhanallah, Al uh, Adim, Obi Hamdi, he added the Halki, Warda Nafsi, and so on. And the same for Dua as well. The repetition of such Dua, the comprehensive Dua that combines the goodness in the hereafter. Furthermore, and especially if you were not that serious about the ibadah, increase salah upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salah upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because every time you say it once, Allah Almighty will send upon you 10 blessings. If one single blessing from Allah Almighty is better than your whole life and everything. So imagine if Allah Almighty accepts that from you. So increase the salah upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Paradise is calling. It is ready for you. The uh, Arayan gate is open wide, waiting for us, for everyone who is uh, in Ramadan. So we need to be, purify our intentions and beautify our actions. Beauty, purify our intentions and beautify our actions for the sake of Allah Almighty. Do sincere things and try your best and and if you do goodness at the end of Ramadan, Allah Almighty will, inshallah, compliment and everything that you have done before, it will be much better. And finally, your biggest goal in Ramadan, your biggest aim, the biggest prize, being freed from hellfire and exempted from accountability. That is why I ask Allah Almighty for al afu and al afia and for forgiveness and freedom from hellfire and for being exempted from accountability entirely. May Allah Almighty make us among those who are exempted in Ramadan from hellfire, those who are freed from hellfire, those who are accepted in Ramadan and those who have won in, in the month of Ramadan. May Allah Almighty forgive all our sins, whatever in the past, whatever in the present or in the future, whatever we have done intentionally or intentionally, whatever we know about, whatever we do not know about, whatever happened in public or in secret, may Allah Almighty forgive us entirely. May Allah Almighty grant us the Laylatul Qadr out of Iman and Ihtisab, inshallah, may Allah Almighty make us among those who have the best and biggest reward in the uh, in Ramadan and in Laylatul Qadr. May Allah Almighty uh, grant us the the, the best in this world and the best in the hereafter and uh, save us from the torment of hellfire, us and our parents, our families, neighbor and society and all our friends and beloved one, all our teachers and students, everyone that 
we love for the sake of Allah Almighty, everyone who loves us for the sake of Allah Almighty, everyone who we benefited from his knowledge, everyone who is benefiting from our knowledge, and everyone who is doing any good deed for the sake of Allah Almighty. May Allah Almighty forgive us all and make us free us all from hellfire and make us among those who are blessed in their life in this world and in the hereafter, blessed in their life and property and family and, and knowledge and their ibadah. May Allah Almighty guide us to a beautiful ibadah that he is pleased with us over it. And may Allah Almighty make us uh, among those who are the companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the highest place in paradise, us and our parents and our families and our friends and all Muslims and believers. May Allah Almighty forgive us all. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.